What is this? Thank you, B&H. Yes! I'm super excited to take a look at the new Fujifilm X-T4, but I gotta be honest, I'm also a little confused with this release. For a second there, it looked as if Fujifilm was gonna branch out two lines of cameras, with the X-T line, X-T2, X-T3, being more of a photography-centric camera, and then the X-H line would be more video-centric. I almost feel like this camera should be the Fujifilm X-H2 especially with the X-T3 still on the market and being a really great photography camera. It's also $200 cheaper. But it's almost as if Fujifilm couldn't wait to get three great features into their X-T line. A new battery, yay! In-body image stabilization, yay! And a new Canon-like fully articulating screen, which, I don't know, seems great for video, but for photography, I think it may, you know, take some getting used to. Anyway, let's take a look at the camera. All right, so taking a quick look at the camera, pretty much everything that you expect in a wonderful Fujifilm camera. We have our focus switch on the front. We have a sync port. We've got a function button on the front. On the top, we have our usual ISO dial, shutter dial, and a exposure compensation dial. Our on-off switch, there's a function button. Underneath the ISO dial, there is a mode dial. Back dial is pretty loud. I really like the screen's option to sort of protect, you know, to throw it in a bag and protect your screen. I do like that feature. Big change on the bottom, the battery. I did notice that the battery doesn't have a friendly orange dot to idiot proof stuff. So you may put the battery in backwards by accident and then have to flip it around. There is a little indicator that says Fujifilm with an arrow, so that'll help. But the orange dot is always super quick and easy. A design change here on the side, there are now floppy doors. Uh, I'm not a big fan of floppy doors, but this may help with weather sealing because they probably have rubber gaskets on them and you push them down, gives you better weather sealing. As far as floppy doors go, they're done well. Okay, so let me charge it up and slap a lens on it. I'll put the 16 millimeter on there and we'll just do a little vlogging. Okay, that was fun. I went out and shot. I uh, tried the camera out for a day or so. And so here are my initial impressions. These obviously can change as I use the camera more, but just like day one, day two impressions. And by the way, just look at this delicious photograph. This, look at the colors. Look at the, look at the little burn bubbles. <laughs> All right, so some initial thoughts. Number one, if you have an X-T3, my day one, day two assessment is if you're mostly a photographer, you don't need to upgrade. Just have extra batteries with you and you'll be totally fine. The image sensor is the same in both cameras and the X-T3 is a great video camera as well. Two, look at that pizza again. <laughs> no. Now, for those of you that are starting your research or you, you don't own a Fujifilm camera and you stumbled upon this video trying to figure out if you wanna buy a Fujifilm camera, just so you know that there is value in the older cameras. I still use my Fujifilm X-T20. It's super tiny. Look at this guy. Oh, look at that pizza. Oh, there, look at this guy, really small. You know, fits in a tiny bag and that's my uh, number one used camera. So those of you looking to jump into the Fujifilm system is what I'm saying. You don't necessarily need the brand new, most expensive Fujifilm X-T4. Third impression, it's a little big. It's a little too big for me in my first impressions. Maybe if I shoot it a little bit more, I'll get used to it. But it's kind of bigger than the X-T2, which I have. Um, so... And it's reaching the level of my Sony a7 III. They're about the same size now, which kind of scares me. I don't really want a Fujifilm camera that is that big. So I think if you're interested in this camera, uh, it's got better ergonomics than the other cameras, but I actually prefer the smaller cameras. All right, third thing that struck me is how quiet the shutter is. I mean, I know, I know people like that, but 
with having electronic shutter available to you where you can turn off the shutter sound completely, the shutter is just like way quiet. Listen to this. As opposed to the X-T2, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there's something satisfying about the shutter on the X-T2. I'm not so crazy about the... Okay, this is what the internal microphone sounds like on the Fujifilm X-T4. And also this is for Casey from Camera Conspiracies. This is the Rokinon 12 millimeter F2. And with the flip out screen, I can look at myself and focus on myself just like that. Or I could focus on the pizza. <laughs> All right, and the last thing is the flip screen. My first impression of the flip screen while shooting for a day and playing around with the camera is I don't like it. <laughs> I am definitely a, since I'm using these cameras mostly for photography, I definitely like looking down with, you know, cause if, if I'm looking down, this is what it looks like. If someone, you know, if I'm shooting on the street, there's a mosquito in here. So for photography, I definitely prefer the screen to look down and shoot from the hip. I don't like the, you know, video camera-iness with the screen on the side. It's probably something I would get used to if it's the only camera I had. But the Sony also does that. My X-T20 does that. And uh, so that's something that I wasn't crazy about, but it may be something that I'll get used to. I'll be sure to do a full review of the camera so you can kind of get a sense, is it for you? Should you upgrade? And check the comments below. There's people who have the camera already and they'll tell you their thoughts on it. All right, I'll see you guys next time.